all its pain and cold and so forth. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Perfect. So uh, welcome everyone today. Uh, we're gonna have lots of fun talking about allergies or not so much fun if you actually have very severe allergies, I guess. And um, I think the key will be is uh, we're gonna go through just kind of basics on allergies and what they are and where they come from and uh, some of the, you know, the symptoms of them. And then of course, we're gonna go into things on what we can use to support, you know, during certain or for you know my allergies uh, for me personally I do have seasonal allergies and I also have um, I have I'm allergic to cats I'm allergic to chocolate and peanut butter if you can imagine uh, that's crazy <laughs> but it is what it is uh, can I still eat a lot of these things yes though so for me it's not a matter of uh, not being able to eat uh, it's just how it you know how it reacts with me so for me I get like a raw line through my eye, a red line, which is kind of weird. And my throat does get a little congested, but not enough to not eat those things. You know what I'm saying? So it's over me. I have, uh, I'm fairly uh, severely allergic to cats and June grafts. And how do I know all this is, of course, I got tested like most of you guys, right? Uh, in our teens or even younger than that, we get tested. And then as we go forward, um, I'm also actually allergic to uh, sulfa drugs. So for me and Dave, actually my husband is allergic to penicillin. So technically we should be wearing those uh, medical alert bracelets because it's very important, but uh, it is on our file. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be okay and don't have to worry about it too much. So uh, allergies. So basically allergies is actually linked to the immune system and also you'll find out it's also linked to the gut. So allergies occur when your immune system reacts with a foreign substance. So it could be pollen, like I talked, you know, food, like we just talked about, pet dander, like from cats or dogs. Uh, there's so many different things that can trigger. And basically, um, this triggers an immune response, basically, that causes uh, a release of histamine. And so this histamine is basically responsible for the allergy symptoms, like we have uh, watering eyes, sneezing, rashes, uh, so many different things. Uh, swelling in certain areas like as an example say we get a bee sting or a bite from a deer fly you know I'm not sure about you but I get really uh, severe welts uh, from certain bugs and then sometimes certain bugs don't bother me at all right um, so sadly <laughs> this is the negative part in my opinion allergies or they call it allergic diseases are on the rise and so if you look at our grandparents uh, and or our grandparents' grandparents, you know, or mom and dads, whatever, uh, you'll notice that they have very few allergies, quote unquote, than say uh, my generation, so I'm turning 42 uh, this year, and other generations uh, below me. So like millennials and even younger and younger. Some of these have to do with uh, just lifestyle right now, food, and we'll explain in a little more detail. Uh, but you know, some are related to vaccines, whether or not we want to, I'm not having a vaccine debate. Uh, it's on the, the slip <laughs> that it, this may cause allergies. And actually the peanut allergy, because you'll notice actually in my generation, when I look at grade school and high school, I think we had one peanut allergy, maybe. Now uh, school, like most classes have 10 or more. And there is actually a link, depending on the age, uh, to uh, actually them putting peanut oil in a vaccine and then that creating an issue. And of course, now it's been removed out. It's been taken out uh, because of those issues. Again, I'm not going to debate that. I just, you know, just so you have that information. So there is a generation that's going to have more certain peanut allergies than others. Anyway, so there have been several attempts to explain reasons why. Again, there's lots of research, but one critical factor is the microbiota. So basically the gut, right? That's all I'm trying to talk about. Um, a study found that basically a lack of diversity in the gut uh, is associated with types of all types of allergies, especially seasonal and nut allergies. So other main causes of allergies. I think the list is endless, so you know I'm not gonna go into too much but airborne allergens. So pollen, dust mites, mold, mold is a big one. 
And I think if we can uh, look at any homes, older homes in Toronto, and you have some respiratory issues or you have you know, some weakness in your lungs, I would definitely make sure you get mold tested because they have found mold in many of those homes. And including our own home uh, in Newmarket, uh, when we were renovating the basement, there was a little bit of mold in there as well. And mold, again, if it's just captured behind, say, uh, your drywall, I'm just touching my drywall over here, and you're not touching it, probably not a big issue. If it's on this side of the drywall though, uh, eventually it's gonna get into the air and create a, a, a problem. And mold is a big problem. It is, it sits in there and it's very hard to get that out of your lungs and your bloodstream. So insect bites, I think we are sting, sorry, we talked about that, bee or wasp. Uh, medications, just talked about that too. Uh, latex is a big thing, especially for those in the medical industry or that those that do uh, things like in a lab that you require gloves. Of course, they now have the latex free gloves. Uh, of course, it's in other things too. But other things that you can touch. Honestly, I've had many things where I will touch something and though I have zero reactions <laughs> to a lot of things that are natural, I have a lot of reactions to things that are not natural. And even actually going down the I'll call it the chemical aisle where you buy, you know, all the different things, say in Walmart or Superstore or wherever you buy your chemicals, hopefully you don't anymore. But should you do, I actually have severe uh, issues now. And I find like for me, it's my uh, respiratory. Like I have a hard time resp like with respiratory issues walking down there. And if I touch now certain uh, chemicals, like for whatever reason, I'm helping someone get rid of them. Like this happened to me one time, we went through all her um, laundry room, kitchen, bathroom, and we were pulling out the chemicals. And after that, I didn't realize, I guess one had, I didn't know which one, but one had, you know, had uh, kind of was the lid wasn't on and it spilled on my hand. And I had almost like a burn, a burn kind of, uh, so, it was a burn in that regard, but what it did turn out to, it actually started to, after I put on lavender, which was phenomenal, by the way, um, it actually started to just, it went red and it created a few bubbles. And then of course I put on a ton more lavender and then it went away. So it could have been a burn, allergic reaction or both, uh, depending on the chemical it was. Um, and again, uh, just an issue. Food again. Soya, fish, shell, fish, oh, sorry, I can't even talk. Shellfish, eggs, cow milk, uh, wheat. Some of these issues actually are, and I'll talk about this too, is not necessarily the actual soya. It is actually because it's so GMO modified and it has glyphosate on it. And that's the same thing with wheat, is that people think they're allergic. And it's actually probably not necessarily that, but that's a whole other discussion as well. So uh, there's, even actually in the essential oil word, world, there's a lot of people say about allergies versus intolerances. And so I just wanted to bring this up just a little bit uh, because I do feel that, uh, you know, one is different than the other and actually, and it's documented. So I was very happy to pull this information. I think it was Lindsay Elmore that uh, gave me some information and then I pulled it from another resource as well. So they are different. Allergies and intolerances are different. Food allergies, basically they involve the immune system reaction and infants and children typically have more food allergies than adults because we have, or they have an immature immune system and digestive systems. Whereas us as an adult, we, you know, typically if we're doing the right things, we have a very robust actually immune system. That's why things like right now, uh, like say the elderly and children, these are the things that you're trying to look for and people that have what? That are immunocompromised, which means have a weak immune system, right? So, so food allergies do that. Food intolerances though are different. And this is actually what I wanted to share here is that I, you know, I really like this little graphic. I know it's a little bit blurry for some people, but basically it's a goat saying they want me now, not you, you know, to the cow. And why is that? I'll tell you why. Okay, so food intolerances evolve basically your gut, <laughs> you know, gastrointestinal reaction. And they are way more common than the allergies. And so when we talk about um, 
uh, gastrointestinal reactions. These are things like diarrhea, right? Like when you eat something and you have diarrhea or painting, blo bloating, that type of thing. These are intolerances. It's not an allergic reaction, it's an intolerance. So intolerance, so here's an example of the cow here. So intolerance of a pasteurized cow's milk that causes cramping and diarrhea is due to the inability to digest lactose, which we call you know, milk sugar. And it's because of the lack of the enzyme lactase. And so we, I just wanna see if I put it on the next page. No, I didn't. Uh, so just so you guys know, <laughs> I've talked about this before many times, but breast milk, actually is very important. I think I, I thought I put it in the slide here, but breast milk is so important for children. And most children actually should not be drinking cow's milk, but they should be drinking goat milk if you're gonna give them milk. And I know there's a lot of research behind, uh, you know, giving milk or not milk, whatever, but goat milk is actually very close to breast milk with regards to uh, the makeup of it. So if a child does not get breast milk, uh, they are actually missing the specific enzymes in order to be able to proce process certain things like milk here, right? At, like afterwards. So if, if you have not breastfed your child or if you know a child that has not been breastfed, one way of getting this specific enzyme into their body, again, if they don't have this enzyme, they will forever have digestive issues. So that, that's, a, that's a very well-known fact. So one way of getting this uh, enzyme uh, that is available in breast milk is actually to find a, a very well-known supplier of unpasteurized goat milk. It actually, unpasteurized goat milk has the same enzyme. So that's one way of getting around, say you can't breastfeed or you have no, no one in your area to, to help you like with that. Um, Cause I do know they have actually breast milk. Um, I don't know what the word is, but like, uh, Places you go, I don't even know if there's a word, a club or something like that. Anyways, where you can buy uh, healthy breast milk that's been tested, of course. Uh, so you can do that, but you can also do goat milk. So um, I think I'll go into it a little bit more after too. Uh, so some of the main symptoms of allergies. So again, when, oh, uh, when you have uh, contact with an allergen, your immune system's reaction is to basically either inflame your skin, sinuses, airways, or digestive system. And here are some of the ways, I'm sure all of us have had some of these in some fashion or another, whether it be sneezing, even nosebleeds actually sometimes are associated with allergies, uh, diarrhea, sweating of the lips or tongue, which is very interesting. Uh, I've not had that myself, uh, but I have had like um, issues with my breathing and I have had rashes and I have had you know uh, digestive tract issues. Um, and sneezing, of course, is, a, is probably the main thing that happens to me, especially if I'm around cats. Uh, so I definitely make sure if I know there's a cat in the area that I'm uh, doing different things. And those that know me will, will also see my face go super red because I'm super hot <laughs> when I'm, in, you know, because you're inflamed, right? Inflammation in my body, it leads to uh, redness in my face. So there's some other things, again, I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but again, whether you get hives, uh, there's ob obviously the anaphylactis when you have a st bee sting. That's of course, not everyone, only certain people have that issue. Uh, eczema, um, swelling. So the big thing obviously uh, with swelling is to make sure, like myself, I know for peanut butter and chocolate that I do have a little swelling because I know it's a little bit harder to swallow. Uh, but it's not enough, like I said, to make an issue, but some people it is. Obviously, that's why the anaphylactis, it closes the airway. That's super important to know, right? And of course, there's EpiPens for that. But again, most people are the sneezing, runny nose, sinus issues, uh, skin issues, rashes, that type of thing. Okay, so ways to reduce your exposure to allergens. I think we all know that if we reduce the allergic or basically the compounds that create the allergies in our home uh, like harsh cleaners or eliminating uh, allergens on surfaces so as an example dust right dust uh, is a big thing i find in homes that most people will use things that in my opinion just move it around 
right? Like, uh, it, so I find actually using a, a duster, either with a thieves cleaner or just, just putting water on your cloth and literally wiping your surfaces will grab those dust allergens and any other dander, pet dander that's on your surfaces, and it will remove them uh, versus using one of those feather things that just literally put it all around. Using the thieves cleaner, in my opinion, is one of the most important ways uh, to reduce exposure to allergens. We know it's plant-based, it's vegan, it doesn't have any of the bleach or formaldehyde or uh, the SLS, which is uh, sorry, sodium lauryl sulfate. It does not have any of that in it. So it does not contain that, those typical allergens that would maybe create issues for respiratory or for even for skin. Uh, so I find the thieves household cleaner as we know, it replaces everything from your window cleaners to your floor, to your surfaces, uh, your kitchen, your bathroom, everything, <laughs> this cleaner does everything. And for me, one bottle replaces every, you know, all these, which means that what? All these maybe chemical cleaners that I used to have in my home are now gone. So just eliminating that is probably redu reduces your exposure significantly to these type of allergens. Other things, of course, we can limit going outside uh, during summer and fall. So as an example, um, I'm allergic to June grass, which kind of seems weird, uh, but it does affect me. And I'm also uh, allergic sometimes, not sometimes, I am allergic uh, when certain crops are in our, uh, are in our farm uh, plot here. And if the combine is going and all that dust is in the air, uh, I actually sometimes will have an issue. So I make sure, what do I do? I shut all my doors, you know, shut the windows, and I just let that settle. If it's during June, when I may have an issue, I'm actually taking, you know, the allergy bomb, which we'll talk about in a second, every single day, sometimes two or three times a day. So again, I might limit myself going outdoors, but I'm a person, I'd rather just go outdoors and enjoy it. Uh, or I'll limit it in the respect I might not be outdoors all day, but I'll definitely, I'm an outdoors person, so I want to make sure I'm out there as much as possible. Reducing food like pasteurized cow milk, <laughs> yeah. like I said, uh, glyphosate uh, sprayed soybeans and corn. Uh, these type of things are a GMO and they create huge issues in our gut, which also leads to immune system, which leads to allergies, all these different things. And you'll find actually a lot of people that have allergies, uh, especially to like, like say lactose, which is in cow's milk, uh, they tend to get a lot of ear infections. They tend to get uh, other things uh, that are created from these allergies and this inflammation uh, in their body. So if you remove things like cow milk from someone who has severe allergies and you're, you'll find they don't have as many ear infections, and they also typically, their allergies, they might still be there, I'm not saying it's taken away, but they're definitely typically lessened. So they're not as um, pro predominant. Wearing protective clothing. So as an example, Dave and I you know, are, uh, have done bee courses and we're also getting bees. So am I gonna wear that bee net to make sure I don't get stung? Yes, <laughs> yes. I am not that person that's going to sit there and have the bees surround them and make that beard be or whatever that beard uh, not happening. Uh, I do understand. I've been stung many times. One right on my eye, like I was pitching, and I had glasses, so I used to play competitive baseball, and it stung me because it got I, as I was pitching, the bee got right between my glasses and my eye, and it stung my eyelid. Well, did not my whole face swell up to like crazy. They brought me to the hospital because they're like, <laughs> clearly something is wrong. And uh, it was very, very painful. So I, I am very cautious with bees. I love bees and I want to have them in my property, but I want to be just super careful on how I do that when there's tens of thousands of them, right? Um, of course, we want to make sure like Lyme's disease is a big thing. Again, I know this is getting a little bit off for allergies, but same thing. When you're hiking, please use long pants to avoid allergens and also other things that are not so good for us, right? So that's just very, very basic stuff. Air purifiers, uh, there's lots around. I'm not going to name any uh, because I think they all have different qualities, but if you have very severe allergies, I think an air purifier uh, is quite important, more so at night, not necessarily during the day for me personally. 
I think more so at night when you're sleeping so you can have a very good night's sleep. And again, sleep is also uh, a factor in your immune system, right? Vacuuming often I think is really important too. Again, picking up that the allergens, but please buy a vacuum that has like a HEPA filter on it or some type of filter because I've seen people vacuum before when I was in university and like all this stuff is coming out the end and you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you know, buy a high quality vacuum, especially if you have allergies to things like um, uh, any animals or um, dust or whatever, right? Uh, shower and wash your skin often to avoid exposure. And I think, again, poison ivy is a good one there. Uh, heat, actually, I know, again, uh, is very interesting that it's not that I find if we're overexposed to something, it creates inflammation in our body, which then, again, we might create rashes. And I had this actually in Utah, uh, which was very interesting. I didn't realize, like, I was wearing capri pants. And I noticed, actually, my, uh, it wasn't, it was actually at night almost, uh, kind of afternoon night that we went out. And then the next day, I noticed I had a red, uh, blotchy weirdness on my skin. And I'm like, wow, I, either I've touched something or... I'm reacting to the, you know, either the sun because it's at a different elevation, something. Anyways, so of course I use my lavender and it worked very well, but little things to think about. The other thing, I'm just gonna move this again, uh, using our laundry soap, I think, and of course using the dryer balls, right? We know that a lot of people are allergic to very harsh chemicals that are in laundry soap. So why not? trade it out for our thieves laundry soap and make sure that again it doesn't have all the sulfates or the uh, toxins i'll just say that are in it and using the wool dryer balls does multiple different things it, a lot of people either use again a liquid fabric softener which is eliminated at this point and then they also if they don't use that they'll use the dryer sheets well those dryer sheets again full of toxins it actually coats your clothes so when people say, oh, it smells really nice, we, all you're doing is smelling a chemical. And so for me, uh, that chemical, knowing that it coats your clothes and you can leave it in your um, linen closet and a month later it still smells, that means it's a very harsh chemical. <laughs> it's not like, if you look at our essential oils, if you were to put a drop or two of whatever essential oil on a cotton ball and put that in your linen closet, how long do you think that lasts for? probably less than a few hours, right? So if you put a lot on, it might last for longer, but their essential oils are volatile, which means they, eva like they evaporate into the air basically. So most times you're not gonna smell things unless you use it all the time, every day. You'll notice when you open my linen closet, there's no smell. There's no chemical smell, there's no thieves smell, it just smells like, nothing right like clean if you want to say like that because there's no smell at all and i really like that because if i want to put a smell on it i will okay so the other key factor is diet so diet i think uh is important because it does help prevent the onset of allergies oh and this is where i talked about of course the breastfeeding so i'm not going to go too much into detail here um and you guys can see the different um issues i guess with weaning people off and uh, certain things like that but it is so important that again uh for us to uh, us as women to breastfeed if possible for our children and if, if you can just spread that word uh there's so many benefits other than just here uh other than to the gut other than to the immunity there's so many other benefits to that but it's so important especially for allergies and i think if I were to look at how many people breastfed, maybe again, looking my mom's generation, baby boomers and beyond, like my grandmother, every, almost everyone breastfed. Like very few people do I know that didn't breast, breastfeed. And, um, and of course, I know there's medical reasons. I'm not, you know, I'm not getting into that debate either. I know there's medical reasons why people can't, but I also know that even within my own family, you know, some people just didn't want to. And, uh, and I do recognize that some of their children have very weak immune systems. I'll just say it like that. And they always seem to have gut issues as well. So, oh, sorry. I just realized you have questions. 
Uh, I'm so sorry. You guys can also come off, like if you have questions. Uh, so since I've done the 30 day gut cleanse, uh, living in certain foods, I'm sorry, I can introduce some foods that I had an allergy to. Absolutely. You were coming right to it, Tammy. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yes, allergy, yes, perfect. Uh, breast milk bank, thank you. I should have looked at this dinner. And uh, so my mom's uh, mother's generation did not breastfeed. So your mother's generation. So that would be um, your grandmother. Is that what you mean? Or like, sorry, no, your mom. That would be, I'm just trying to think of age. What age would that be? 80 plus? Oh, my grandmother who's 94. She definitely breastfed. And I know my grand, my other grandma, though she's passed now, uh, all her nine kids were breastfed. So maybe again, just could be local area. I don't know. But I definitely know, I mean, it is always been the most convenient also, right? Let's talk about, let's talk about convenient and also cost effective. So in times of, um, you know, re recession, wars, that type of thing, I mean, um, uh, definitely, definitely something that I think uh, most people do. I, again, I'm not... I'm, I, I don't know, uh, European, yeah, my family's European descent too. Anyways, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to park that. But uh, long story short, breastfeeding is very important. <laughs> Google it for more information, I guess. Okay. Number 14, uh, which I think is our last one here for um, just uh, things that affect it, again, is the gut. So basically, uh, the, the bacteria in the gut and the imbalances of that is so critical for not just this allergies meaning or the immune, but so many other things. And research has shown that probiotics, prebiotics, and symbiotic, that they actually do help restore gut microbiota. And it actually does boost the immune system against allergies. So there's lots of research. Uh, again, you don't have to believe me. You can just go online. And I'm just gonna uh, close this chat, but please feel free again to, to talk if, if you have a question. All right, so when I look at all the research, and I've done a lot of research on this, one of the top things, again, uh, to help with allergies is intestinal cleansing. So Tammy hit the nail on the head on that one. Uh, so there is so many people that have done our cleansing system or cleansing trio with some additions, like Life9 probiotic, that Afterwards, and I think if Monia is on here, I'm not sure if she is. Uh, I think she is with the iPad there. Uh, but you know, I think she can even attest to, and Tammy just did too, is that after these cleanses, you can actually start eating things that you didn't before. And also with the addition of enzymes and probiotics, even just those two added, significant difference in how you respond to food allergies in particular. Um, did you want to say something, Monia? I saw you come off there. Or Tammy? And if not, that's okay too. Okay. Okay. So what are the other supplements for allergies? Well, there's quite a few. <laughs> you know, I put together two lists here. Um, do I think everything all at once? Of course not. Of course not. I, I just wanted to provide a fulsome list because we're doing a training. And the first list is my probably up into like longevity uh, is actually my, probably my top, right? Uh, the top for me would be Allerzyme. I think you can see by the name. <laughs> Young Living Smart like this. I wonder what Allerzyme is good for. <laughs> Allerzyme. Hmm. Okay. Just, I'll park that. Enzyme or, or sorry, Essential Zyme or Essential Zyme 4. Uh, master Formula. Uh, specifically because it has the prebiotics, right? And I also, of course, know it's fantastic for the immune system and so many other systems, respiratory, that type of thing. But it's, I just wanted to highlight that it does have the prebiotics in there. Life9 probiotic, which I just talked about, right? And again, Mult, uh, Mighty Pro is the kid's probiotic. Do adults take that? Absolutely. Do children take Life9? Absolutely. Why? because we are meant to have bacteria in our gut. And these probiotics help uh, facilitate that 
because there's so many different things. Again, you're on antibiotics, even just once in your life, you have just wiped out a ton, a ton of good bacteria, right? Uh, Ningered Longevity is a supplement actually, and it also is an oil, just to let you guys know. Uh, Agilis, uh, specifically because of the turmeric and some other components in there. And then the second list is kind of a extra list, right? So if you're gonna do the cleansing trio, obviously Comfort Tone, ICP, and the essential zyme is already on the other list. Um, other things like Immune Pro, Pro, sorry, is a supplement in the States. And of course, what is it good for? Immune Pro, hmm, I wonder. Maybe it supports the immune system, right? Uh, Digest and Cleanse, I know has helped so many people in our team. And yes, it is out of stock right now, but they're working hard to get it back in stock because I know some people on our team absolutely need that. And it, again, instead of maybe doing the cleansing trio, uh, utilizing Digest and Cleanse uh, might be, you know, might work for you. I always say for me, and I think you guys have heard this a few times, not everything or one thing is the best. I, I do have to say that. Everyone starts at a place. I might be breastfed, you might not be. My immune system is different you know, than yours. My digestive system is different than yours. Our body chemistry is different, right? So it's not always just one thing that you know, will work for you. you know, I, always, I get the question all the time, what's the one thing? I'm like, there's not just one thing. <laughs> like, it's, it's a variety of different things uh, that helps, right? So you can try just one thing and see, but if you have a weak immune system and a poor digestive system, I think that's where you need to start, right? So anyways, uh, Allerzyme <laughs> is a vegetarian enzyme complex, sorry, that promotes healthy digestion. It helps with digestion, sorry, digestion of excess carbohydrates. So if you're a big carbohydrate eater, uh, which many are, Allerzyme could be something that you add in addition to maybe your essential zymes. It does help uh, with the occasional, uh, obviously, bloating, gas, minor cramping, that type of thing. And a lot of times, if you're just taking this versus any other enzymes, you'll take it three times a day. So again, prior to meals, but the truth is, if you just forget, just take it whenever you can, right? That's Enzymes are literally the spark of life. They're so, so important. Do, when do I take this? In, in uh, May, June, and July. <laughs> Why is that? Because I do have issues, right, with my uh, it, June grass, right? So for me, that's really important. Do I take this also when I maybe am going to go to a different um, place to eat? Because I don't know if I, I do have food allergies, right? So I don't know what they're putting in certain foods. So yes, this is one that Gary says to take with you when you're going out to eat. Because do we typically also eat a lot of carbs when we're out? Yes, right? Um, I just wanna see. Uh, yes, and it also is good to help with digesting gluten. Absolutely. So thanks for that, Kim. I absolutely, it is. Okay, so next one. So do people have some gluten intolerances? Probably. Is this probably a good one to have? Probably, right? Um, you guys all know what Essentials Line 4, I'm not gonna read everything other than to know that Essentials Line 4 is the only enzyme right now that we have in Canada, but all these other enzymes I talked about, right, like, like the uh, Allerzyme is in the States. And they do have a kid's one, by the way. So the kid's sense, I think it's called Mighty Zyme. Uh, so enzymes, again, just to reiterate, they help break up the food, right, whether it be, in this case, it breaks up the fats, the proteins, fiber, and carbohydrates. So this one does do all four, but again, if you're super, um, if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, you want maybe a little bit more uh, addition like the allerzyme with that. So anyways, this is so important because enzymes literally help take that, all these different critical uh, fundamental uh, pieces and they help us uh, with the nutrient absorption of those. So what I find most people actually are lacking in nutrients. And so they might take a ton, like they might go and get the shot of uh, B, uh, B12 and they'll take this, they'll take that. But you know what? If you're not absorbing those enzymes, you're just peeing the most of those nutrients out. 
So it's really, really important to understand how the body works. And any enzyme that Young Living has is better than no enzyme. So if you have an enzyme, just pop it in your mouth. Uh, you are going to be way better for it. Life 9 Probiotic. As uh, Sorry, it looks like the screen uh, slid it over. But as you can see, and I talked about the studies of increasing the good gut bacteria. Um, sorry. Uh, I went out and put my, sorry, my dinner in the oven and popped my <laughs> essential slime. Exactly. Um, so uh, Life 9, uh, it's a phenomenal probiotic. I actually have purchased other probiotics just to see the difference because that's who I am. Just like enzymes, I've done that as well. And you know what? I do not have the same response as I do with Young Living. And it's quite interesting that, you know, because I do experiment all the time. So in general, probiotics do help improve the immune system about 66%. And what makes Young Living's Life9 so phenomenal is it contains nine clinically proven probiotic strands and 17 billion live active cultures. Uh, so, and this is very important. This is the number that they don't tell you. It improves colonization up to 10 times. And so, what is so important about our probiotic? Because there I've seen like 125 billion, you know, uh, whatever, live active cultures. So what is so important? It's that we have the, A, it's time released, but we have two super strands, which are listed, unfortunately, a little bit <laughs> on the side there. But uh, we have this two super strands. That actually is what, that's where, if you, I, wanna, I don't want to say the money is, but that's, that's where the important part of our probiotic is and why when we take a 125 billion one versus a 17 billion one, uh, that is why. is because they put the money into the two super strands that have been tested and proven. And, um, and of course, obviously, the seven others uh, are still phenomenal, but it's those two super strands that are really, really super important. Um, sorry, let me go. Next page. Uh, Master Formula. Again, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it other than it's phenomenal. And this is something that I think I don't really talk too much about because I just thought that people knew that it's a multi-nutrient <laughs> supplement, like a, like a multivitamin. I thought people knew that there was pro, uh, prebiotics in it, sorry, that it contains all these vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. Uh, other nutrients. Um, but you know what? I just wanted to put it here just to kind of show you. Master Formula for me is a foundational product. And if you ever listen to either Gary um, or Dr. Dan Purser or um, even actually um, Lindsay um, Elmore or, or various others, uh, they will talk about Master Formula all the time. Uh, and one of the, I think the big reasons is it was reformulated by, from different components of Young Living supplements and everything is kind of put into one, one package and it's just a phenomenal supplement. So I see there's another question here. Sorry. I guess I should just leave that up. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going too quick. Do I use Ninja Red and Master Formula together as I can... Oh, sorry, as you can get too much of nutrients, nutrient overload. Well, I'm going to tell you this, uh, Kim, that I do use them together. Uh, I don't always, like Master Formula, I kind of uh, do every, I don't do it every day. I probably do it every maybe three days, uh, two to three days. Uh, but I don't think most people are so nutrient deficient. The fact that if you're just having Master Formula and maybe two ounces of Ninja Red or maybe you have 10 ounces, I don't think that's possible. Uh, because I think most people, their gut health is not actually um, strong enough to absorb all those nutrients. I don't think people are eating healthy enough, and I don't think they're supporting their gut enough for them to absorb all that. And um, I, so I personally, again, you can talk to someone else, uh, you know, uh, more of an expert on that, but I don't feel... Uh, that you will overload having those two. It was designed to have both together. So, uh, and that's actually how Lindsay Elmore talks about it. Uh, Carla Green, who's uh, very well known uh, with supplemental information. This, you know, a master formula, Ninja Red, uh, are, you know, are two of, she calls it the table, four legs, and, uh, you know, having the foundation. 
Master Formula and Ninja Red are the two of those four uh, foundation. So uh, with Life9, how many tablets would you take and how many times a day? So, okay, Life9, uh, is, so the best time to take any probiotic uh, is at night before you go to bed. The reason why is the colonization. Uh, so it, because you want it to grow and grow and colonize and colonize and colonize. So when you go to sleep, your body basically, hopefully you haven't had anything to eat for the, you know, hour or a few hours before. So your body can just, your digestive system can just flourish, right? With the, with the um, probiotics. Um, if you are not doing well, like say, I should say in a regular day, most people just take one life nine at night. Um, if you are in acute situation, like you're sick or, you, you know, you know, you have a low, a low immune system or you have a, a weak uh, digestive system, then you can take it morning and night. You can do one and one. If you're, say you're really sick, you can take as many life nine as you want. I've taken up to six at night and then two to four in, in the morning because I don't like to be sick. <laughs> so, you know, and I understand the value of gut health. And, and if you actually listen to Ed Daly, uh, which is a nurse practitioner uh, out of uh, New York hospital, um, forget the name of the hospital, I apologize. But anyways, um, he now works with Young Living though, but he actually will say, he takes like two to four, he says the same thing, two to four in the morning, and then six sometimes at night. And when I went to Ecuador and they did my blood analysis, I had to take six, uh, for, six at, at night uh, of life nine for three months. And I actually continued on for quite a few months after that uh, because a few times I wasn't loyal, you know how that goes, right? Uh, but I, my gut health was needing some support. And even though I go to the washroom all the time, I just didn't understand because I didn't have the analysis. So uh, hopefully that helps you. Uh, again, if you have no issues, one at night, perfectly fine. Uh, there is no limit to the amount of, like, you could take the whole bottle. So I just want to be clear on that. You are not going to OD on Life9. <laughs> so, and there are actually treatments, uh, again, down in Ecuador and or I've seen online where people take uh, like 30 of Essential Zyme, 30 of Life9, 30 of you know, super C third, like I'm talking big numbers here. Right. So that's why, you know, I, I have no fear on num those kind of numbers because I've seen amazing, amazing stories and, and testimonials happen from that. So, uh, awesome. Okay. I'm going to continue on. So Ninja Red, I think, uh, you guys all know it's my, <laughs> literally my favorite product of Young Living. I love oils. But oils are in here, so it's all good, right? So Ninja Red, some of the benefits we know, again, it protects the a cell DNA, helps with immune function, which why, you know, this is what we're talking about, right? Immunity. It also helps uh, with your bowels. And it helps so many other things, which are not, uh, you know, obviously uh, not tied to allergies. But the two big things that are tied, uh, or two or three big things that are tied to allergies are immune function, <laughs> right? <laughs> bowel movements, your bowel, your digestive system, and of course your liver is, is very important. Your kidneys and livers are important. So, I mean, of course you can see it does so much more than that. And it's just super high antioxidants. Antioxidants are basically, uh, you want to get as many antioxidants in your body as much as possible every day of your whole entire life. And you will you will be a different person in the respect of how your energy is, how your skin looks, how your bowels function, all these different things. Uh, the best I've ever felt, which is so funny, uh, and this is what I will, we're working on, you know, my husband and I, is that I want to afford to be able to drink one bottle of Ninja Red a day. That is, I know that sounds weird, but that is my goal. And the reason why is because a Barbara, who's on our team as well, her and I, we, we saved up our money, the first convention we ever went to, and we basically had a bottle of Ninja Red a day. And uh, it was phenomenal. Like we felt absolutely amazing. So again, the more you get in you, the better you're going to be. And I'm just going to continue on from there. Uh, it's, it's, it helps every, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have seen this chart. Uh, or something similar anyway in our trail guide, 
but this helps. You'll notice Ninja Red is at the top of every single uh, body system, whether it be skin and or hair and skin, breathing, so respiratory, digestive, immune, heart, muscles, lymphatic, nerves, hormones, every single thing Ninja Red helps. Okay. So these are just su super important to know. And again, if I were to choose any single product, this is the product. So this is it. So when people ask me, what's your one product, I guess, this, is, this will be the one I say. And once you get on it, and I challenge you to do 30 days at 60, or sorry, 60, 60 ounces would be great, but six ounces for 30 days only, and then you can pull back to the maintenance, which is one to two ounces. So I find people that don't top up those six ounces for the first 30 days of drinking Ninja Red don't see the full benefits because they're always still deficient and our body hasn't filled up. And I always use this analogy of a dry, or a dry sponge. If you pour water over top of a dry sponge, most of the water starts to just go you know, on the sides. It takes a long time for that to fill up. And so that's why you need 30 days, because that's how our body system works, is that we're putting nutrients in it, but it doesn't know how to absorb it yet. It doesn't know how to absorb it yet. And at some point, you're just gonna put so much nutrition into it that it starts to work properly and it starts to absorb and it starts to send those type of nutrients and minerals and all these phenomenal vitamins and antioxidants basically that are in this awesome juice. And it's gonna send it to the brain, the heart, everything that your body needs. So clearly, <laughs> I love Dings Red. And if you're not on it, it's, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I feel sorry for you. Definitely because it's so awesome and you feel so awesome on it. So. Uh, please, 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 uh, you know, drink you some Ninja Red and uh, we'll all be happier for it, right? So anyways, why do we purchase Young Living Supplements? I basically said, but I just want to talk about again, uh, that again, it makes it more bioavailable because they have essential oils infused into all our supplements. So it increases their potency, increases the effectiveness. And of course, we, because of that, we tend to have profound health benefits. And I think a lot of people will notice when they take Super B and Super C uh, versus like a store-bought version, it is significantly different, the energy and how you feel. Uh, it's, anyways, it, so I challenge you again, if you're taking a vitamin C at a store, because that seems to be a big thing right now, right? And you take our vitamin C, you are gonna start feeling different. I, I have no doubt in my mind, because again, the science doesn't lie, you absorb, um, without oils in the supplement, about 42% within the day, right? 24 hours. But with essential oils infused into our supplements, you're going to absorb 86% within one hour. And so that is really important to know. That's double. Basically, you're absorbing double the nutrition. So if it's, you know, if you're going to save five, ten dollars but you're real, are you really? Because no, that's not true. Because you're not absorbing it. You're actually peeing out uh, more than 50% when you're using a store-bought uh, product. I see there's a question. Okay, do I need to refrigerate Life9? So I do. However, it does say on the bottle that you do not. So that's the official Young Living thing. You do not need to refrigerate it, but I do. Um, is there any uh, other brands of vitamins which are essential and infused? No. <laughs> that's a good question, Nancy. Young Living is the only brand that has, uh, because we have the patent technology on how to do that. And for as far as I'm aware, there are no other brands that have essential oils infused in them. And I could be wrong on that, but I don't think so. Um, and of course there are essential oils. So they're, they're such a high quality as we know. And Gary Young, Gary Young started actually with supplements. He didn't start with essential oils. I don't think people recognize that. And so he is a master like, I don't know, there's a name, I, I don't know what it is, but a master supplement person. And so um, things like multigreens and comfort tone were the first supplements that Young Living ever, you know, um, labeled. And they have some pretty amazing stories to go with them. I'll just say it like that. So when, when they started to infuse the uh, supplements with essential oils, that's when they saw such an amazing and drastic changes in people's health and well-being. So there are, um, uh, obviously Life9, just to be clear, uh, does not have uh, essential oils because it's all bacteria, right? So I just thought I'd clarify that because that was a question we had before. 
Okay, so oils for allergies. As you can see, again, there's quite a few. I kind of listed, I don't want to say my most favorite or anything like that, but I definitely listed on the side what I thought were something that you would use during, and then maybe something that you'd use long-term for support. Uh, so again, lavender, lemon, peppermint. We already know, we call it the allergy bomb, right? Or allergy trio. And I'm gonna show you the, 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 how to do that in a second. That'll be in the next slide. But um, these are phenomenal. And I, I'm gonna have, I think there's a study in the next one, but basically lavender is a natural antihistamine, right? So knowing that and this combination together, it really works well. And I'll talk about that in the next slide, but RC uh, stands for what? Respiratory care. So it has three different types of eucalyptus in it. So eucalyptus is known for what? Helping with sinuses, helping with respiratory, helping the airways, right? Raven is, to be honest, I'm not an RC fan. I love Raven. <laughs> Raven for me is phenomenal. Uh, and that is something that if you look at what it was created for, and I'm just going to throw that out there and you can Google that. Uh, Raven is a phenomenal oil for respiratory health and also, which also means for allergies, right? Uh, another one, uh, Breathe Again Roll On is <laughs> great. Uh, and of course, uh, the list goes on. So I don't want to go into too, all the different oils. I think I have a few um, coming up just to show you some of my favorites. But um, I also wanted to just point out, because a lot of people ask me what GLF is. <laughs> That's an essential oil blend. And the actual letters stand for gallbladder liver flush. So I just thought people, they, they might not be aware of that. And mountain savory is another one I just wanted to point out. Mountain savory, if you look at in our Facebook group under you know all the different antibiotic combinations, you'll notice mountain savory is on quite a few of them, which what does that mean? It probably supports our immune system in a great deal. Okay, so this is where I just wanted to show there's so much research. Uh, I literally just picked three, <laughs> like I, uh, but there is tons and tons of journal articles uh, and you know, because people always ask, can they actually reduce aller uh, uh, sorry, allergic reactions? And of course, the answer is yes. And this has been proven by science, not just by us, um, that lavender, again, does help reduce. Uh, and I consider it a natural antihistamine. Um, so there's other things uh, that also, geranium, uh, oils with, de uh, with the lemonine, which uh, lemonine, Google that, <laughs> as a constituent and see what other things it does. <laughs> but lemonine is in our citrus oils like lemon, orange, grapefruit. So when you Google lemonine and you know the properties and the research behind it, there is even way more than just allergies that it, that it helps with. Anyways, these are just a few studies that help demonstrate this, but the list goes on. But this is what our allergy trio or allergy balm is, right? Uh, we do lavender, lemon, peppermint. This is literally one of the most common things that anyone who has allergies uh, will do. And it's five drops of each and you put it in a capsule. I've had so many people, I'm just gonna say, just put it in the diffuser. I don't think it really works to the same extent. I'll just say it like that, um, or I'm pretty confident it doesn't. So I've never, even for me, I don't find it works for me either. So I need to take it internally, or I absolutely need to put it on the bottom of my feet in larger doses than what's listed here. Um, or I've been in a pinch where I didn't know a cat you know, was in this home, and I came to the home, and I literally just dropped uh, lavender under my tongue. Like, it didn't taste good, but I was like, okay, well, I, I am very much allergic to cats, so for me, I, I knew I had to be there for hours, like a few hours, because I was doing a class. So I just got the lavender and just started dropping it under my tongue. You can also put it down your spine and things like that. But again, I know for my personal body, and I'll say it like that, that you, that you want to make it a capsule. And you can see in the background all these little capsules. So you just open up the capsule, Young Living Celsius on the NFR side, and or like Nature's Emporium or any other um, health food store will sell. Uh, they're called veggie capsules. And they also sell gelatin capsules, but don't pick, like you can use those in a pinch, but I don't recommend them. 
as gelatin is an animal product. Anyways, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the other thing that people do add uh, is RC, not internally, but they're just saying, you know, this is just a little a graphic I found. So taking the, the allergy trio and maybe making a chest rub with RC or Raven or having it in your diffuser. Um, I find if I, again, during these times, I will have Raven in my diffuser and I will take my allergy balm uh, morning and night. Normally I need it morning and night uh, during June time. I'll just say like that. Or if I'm going to a person's house that I know that has a cat, like I had to sleep over at a friend's house in Ottawa a few years back and she has three cats. So it's not just one, she has three cats. And I know from previous times I had gone before the oils, I had to go out to the drugstore and get uh, antihistamine because I could not breathe. Like I was having trouble breathing. So for me, what did I do? Now that I have the oils, I just swapped out that and I use this trio. And so, and it worked phenomenal, but I did just a flag. I had to take it three times throughout the day. I took it in the morning. I took it near, you know, lunch-ish. And then I took it before I went to sleep. Okay, so breathe again, roll on. Who's used this before? Thumbs up, a few people. This is one of my favorite products from NFR. I literally have it on every order, every month, because I go through it so much. I don't know why, I just love it. I wish they make it in a non roll on, but I actually will put it here. So when I have sinus issues or rest, you know, um, or allergies or anything like that, when people ask me what's my favorite, I do like this, uh, breathe again, because I can put it on my face and I have no issues. Whereas I have issues uh, with RC and sometimes Raven, I can go like that. But RC, like, and my skin don't, don't like each other. So I have to have a carrier oil with RC on. And I don't use carrier oil. So. What? Maria, are you talking or? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> All good. Okay. Uh, it's my hubby's perfume. Exactly. Um, have to put it on my feet. So what oil are you talking about, Peggy? Uh, Breathe Again or RC or Raven? So I'll just let you breathe again. Oh, okay. So I actually, so again, everyone, this is actually a perfect good time. Everyone's uh, skin is different, right? Our chemistry is different. So my aunt, I know, like has trouble putting RC on her skin, but absolutely has no trouble with Raven. And I'm kind of the same. Um, uh, but again, I can use it with a carrier oil, but I tend to not use carrier oil. So, you know, so I try to find a different solution. Anyways, it's just another option. Please don't feel like you have to, you know, it's, it's just another option because again, everything is different for everyone. Um, a little tip for bee stings or even insect bites, right? Uh, for bee stings, obviously want to, want to take the stinger out. But the other thing is actually uh, applying a few drops of lavender on the location after the stinger is out, and you can kind of repeat it until you feel the venom's gone. Or a lot of people also use the purification or lemon oil. I've seen purification because that's all I had in my my back pocket work wonders for bee stings. So or any insect bites. Uh, so again, it I find it takes the pain away fairly quickly uh, within a minute or so and then the redness is gone also so the swelling is gone as well um i just want to see here okay all right um other products to help so i think uh probably you guys have seen some of these products oops i apologize just trying to move this again um so <clears throat> so the rose ointment for me I've had so many people that have had issues. So uh, I briefly talked about it, but I didn't go into too much detail. But typically, again, allergies are from the gut and also from the liver, right? So when we uh, have rashes and stuff like that or reactions, um, I guess, okay. Um, when we have all that, then um, using a topical ointment sometimes versus an essential oil is actually better because it's more soothing to the skin. Sometimes, uh, like as an example, when I put on lavender on my skin, it's very drying for me, actually. I actually end up with a, a white mark. 
It doesn't hurt me at all or anything like that, but lavender is drying to the skin. And if my skin right now, especially in the winter, is already dry, it's gonna leave a white mark. It goes away when I wash my hands or I put cream on, so it's fine. But that's just something to note. So when I put rose in my thigh though, or this any cream, any body lotions, or even the animal sense ointment, I use animal sense ointment just like I use the rose ointment, basically. I use it for cuts and scrapes uh, to help with uh, my skin. Um, I love it, actually, and it's a huge container. So for me, it's, it's a really, really good uh, buy. Rose ointment, I know, has helped people with eczema and dry skin, and that's the only thing that worked for those people. Like, they tried Melrose, they tried all these other things. Uh, that, and also, of course, uh, I did recommend doing a, a colon cleanse and a liver cleanse uh, to help with that. But the Seedling Diaper Rash Cream, I think, again, we can all say is pretty phenomenal. And we've seen lots of pictures on our site that uh, show how awesome uh, some of these other products are, right? Like, we'll see a rash, and then we don't see a rash, right? Uh, so, Christina? Uh, yeah. Even the um, animal scent with Melrose is quite amazing for um, a rash. Yes. Absolutely. Like the, two, the two together is phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, uh, sorry, I just want to cancel this. Do, do, do. Anyways, whatever. So, uh, and I think there's been a few people that have posted that, right? Uh, how nice it is. So, let's see. Uh, di ceiling diaper rash cream has worked incredibly in our home, even for super. Yeah. So yeah, you can do, yeah. Chap lips, anything, right? So, um, someone also uses animal sense ointment for dry skin, hands and feet. Uh, absolutely. So just going to clear all these drawings. Sorry. I don't know how to get back to there. Okay. So, <clears throat> so can I continue on? So, okay, that was basically kind of the last part of it. Uh, I think you guys already know the resources, but before I continue on here, um, I just thought, you know, I, just like normal, I do download a lot of information on you guys. And of course, 100%, this will be available, uh, the presentation and also, of course, this audio video. But I think the, the, the key things to take away from this is that we really de we need to focus on our, our gut health right? We need to focus on our, our liver, of course, and also to figure out what things that are actually creating the allergens and try to remove them. As an example, you know, if you are allergic to things that are in a hand sanitizer or things that are in a soap or things, all these chemicals that are in are just soaps. Oh my gosh. Uh, they're horrendous, you know, and you, and you see people, they come out and their hands are all um, red and they have uh, bu like bumps on them and stuff like that after people wash dishes. Uh, so there's so many different things that create allergies, shampoos even, that type of thing. So it's important to know what they are, get your test, like I think this is a phenomenal to go get, you know, to go get tested what your allergies are and then try to eliminate as much as possible and try to use natural products like some of the ones I've used or talked about today uh, to help swap out, you know, things that maybe are creating part of that allergen and to just try to keep, in my opinion, um, an understanding of all the different things that are available to you. And again, do you need everything? Absolutely not. But if you find that you're having a, an ongoing issue with an allergen and the, say the allergy bomb is not working for you, um, what I know from the essential oils is the healthier you are, the less essential oils you need and the more effective they are. So the unhealthier are, which means the more acidic and the more digestive issues and all this stuff, you need typically not necessarily more oil, but it's more, um, uh, more times. So as an example, maybe instead of one time during the day, you need the allergy bomb, but if you're unhealthy, maybe you actually need it three times, right? Or uh, some people, you know, when they message me, right, and you've seen this on, on many calls, say if you're sick right now, I don't say just take one inner defense and, and one multigreen and one ounce of Ninja Red. I say take, take that, take six ounces of Ninja Red, take six Life Nine, 
and take multigreens and interfence every hour or every other hour you know, for two or three days that, you know, so for me, it's about um, how many times, not necessarily just upping your one dose. Because I think sometimes, again, your, your system, uh, it doesn't overload it, but especially in our defense, something like that, it and the oils in a capsule, sometimes it upsets your tummy if you're taking too much in that one moment. But if you spread it out over the day, your body will actually absorb it, use it, and it is better for your system. Right. So um, does anyone have any questions? I'm sorry. I, I hope I didn't miss any questions there. You guys can come off uh, if you want. And if you have any questions, we can you can ask them um, or type them in. For some reason, I've lost. OK, there we go. That was great information, Christina. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was really good. Awesome. Well, I mean, again, uh, it's our it's our educational team, <laughs> which you have led to, Monia, that have provided a lot of this information. So I'm very, very grateful uh, to our teams uh, for for you know supporting the teams, basically, right? So uh, because that's really uh, one of those things that uh, you know we're we're a tribe, and if we if we work together, uh, we're going to be able to produce even better things, right? So, um, if anyone else has any questions, and if not, I'll wrap it up. But again, just to let everyone know, uh, SOAR is October 3rd and 4th. Uh, again, I'm not saying go out and get your tickets right now. I know everyone is in different states of everything. Uh, but just put it in your calendar because uh, I know it's going to be a wonderful time. And I really look forward to this. And it's in October. We're well far away from that. And just hold that date because I think we get so much value from being together just like we are now. And I also wanted to invite you guys, I didn't post it here, but in our Spruce Clubhouse, um, I've had a lot of requests to do kind of a virtual um, get together. So I think we have it at four o'clock tomorrow, if I remember correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong, someone. Did I put it in? I put it in my calendar. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do this social. I don't know. I, I, I tried to find a name that you could put oil in and social worked, right? So. I just added a few extra letters, but so we're at four o'clock tomorrow. We're just going to jump on, uh, bring your Ninja Red or your Zing, uh, bring some oils or wine or beer, whatever you want to do. And we will see you uh, on a Zoom at four o'clock just to, it's really meant as a, you know, see where everyone's at and support everyone in the best way we can. So I hope again, you find this uh, valuable. And again, I'll, as soon as it's ready to post, I'll post it and you'll have access to the, the, the webinar, sorry, the PowerPoint. So if you want to use this or manipulate it in whatever way you need to, um, it will be available for you too. So awesome. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, okay. everyone. Excellent. Have a great night. Take care. Bye. Bye.